Hi, welcome to breakout room eight, a pandemic pivot from paper thesis submissions to ETDs. We have Nicholas Deese online, Amy Walker from the Pratt Institute Libraries, and Austin McLean from ProQuest, the part of Clarivite. I'll hand it over to you, Austin. Great. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, Nick and I uh, had a lot of uh, fun putting this together, and it's really primarily Nick's story. ProQuest has a cameo role in the middle there, but Nick's going to do most of the explaining about what's happened and where they are now. So over to you, Nick. Awesome. Thank you, Austin. Uh, and just an FYI for everybody, while Amy Balmer contributed greatly uh, to the creation of this presentation, it's mostly going to be me and Austin talking today. Um, so hello, my name is Nick Deese, and I'm the user experience librarian at Pratt Institute Libraries, where I design and develop the library's website, as well as manage a wide array of our web-based applications. Um, so today with Austin, uh, I'm going to give you uh, some details on a years long process of shifting from paper-based thesis submissions to ETDs at Pratt Institute. So to start off, Pratt Institute is an art and design school with an FTE of about 5,000 students. We're located in Brooklyn, New York, so it's a city school. Uh, and of these 5,000 or so students, about 1,300 of them are graduate students. Uh, we have about 22 graduate programs that submit theses to the library. And these projects usually entail a lengthy paper uh, and inclusion of video documentation, of art exhibits, images, interactive software occasionally, and uh, multimedia. So what we're looking at here is a beautiful shot of our campus uh, showcasing how things were back in 2019. Uh, very bustling, lots of activity. Back then, thesis submissions were done in person. Library staff would review submissions uh, and confirm the title and signature pages, conform to our formatting guidelines before accepting and packaging them for shipment to our local bindery. Uh, students would pay an overall thesis binding fee uh, and were entitled to one personal bound copy, which was really appreciated by the community. Uh, and when those bound copies returned, often months later, uh, the theses would be cataloged and entered into our ILS and made publicly discoverable uh, on our catalog. One thing to note about that is they had very limited metadata. Usually we just pulled in the essentials like the, the title, author, year, uh, and related academic department. Um, so suddenly in uh, 2020, we had the pandemic, um, which changed things dramatically. Uh, but before the pandemic, we had uh, an average of about 500 thesis submissions. Uh, at the beginning of every, uh, or at the end, sorry, of every spring semester. Uh, so this would usually happen in a short time window, uh, and we needed to solicit help from faculty librarians and staff in order to make sure that we were able to handle these big spikes uh, in activity. This was very unpredictable most of the time. Uh, sometimes we had whole classes coming in to submit at once. And occasionally, uh, students who had printed their thesis on wrong paper uh, or using the wrong format would naturally be very distraught when they were rejected. Uh, and they would have to go through the process of getting new signatures and reprinting uh, two copies, uh, which can ultimately be very expensive. So it was a stressful time um, for many students. Uh, in some cases, uh, people were very upset when things didn't go right. Uh, and it was often a bummer from the library side to leave these graduate students with that being their lasting memory of the library. It's not really uh, something we wanted. So moving into the pandemic, uh, we knew we wanted to kind of solve some of those um, those logistical problems, but at the time we had no remote submission workflow whatsoever. So we had a very short time window because March 2020, right? Um, and we usually start getting theses in around May. So we needed to come up with something uh, that would work in the interim that would leave some room for asynchronous back and forth that's usually required for students to get their paper in ship shape. Uh, so Another important element uh, for us was implementing some kind of approval mechanism. All, all the departments at Pratt have very different people who are required to sign and approve theses. Uh, so we needed to make something that would account for that. 
And in particular, there was concern in the library's leadership about allowing students to submit digital documents without real pen and ink signatures. Uh, there, there was worries that this might be abused or it could be inaccurate. Um, and there was also the problem with supplemental files. Uh, previously, we had students submitting their files on flash drives, disks, and DVDs. Uh, and so we needed whatever platform we were going to use to be able to accommodate some pretty massive files. Um, these days, a lot of students, when they submit documentation of their artwork, they're like submitting 4K video, which takes up a ton of storage space. So after meeting regularly with the library director and the chair of library faculty, we came to the conclusion that we could use the Institute's Google Drive system to facilitate digital submissions for 2020, um, while we simultaneously researched a more long-term solution. The G Drive submission flow was modeled after the print workflow, but it had some key differences. Instead of allowing students to submit, we only gave permissions to verified thesis advisors, which ensured that the document submitted had the approval of the department. Uh, and we created a unique shared drive for each department and pre-populated them with folders for each student submitting for that period uh, based on data from the registrar. So it was a very lengthy process. We did some scripting in order to pre-populate those directories, um, but ultimately, we used Google Drive and we were able to facilitate the submission asynchronously. So this was in May, 2020. Um, so immediately it became apparent that while functional, the solution was not without its difficulties. Despite regular outreach uh, and communication with faculty across the Institute, there was some degree of confusion with faculty thesis advisors as to how the new submission workflow was supposed to function. Some faculty members were also uncomfortable with the idea of using Adobe Acrobat to digitally sign documents. Uh, and we needed to invest additional staff time to walk many of them through that process. Our new digital system uh, was only digital, so there was no way to get students personal copies of their work, unfortunately. Uh, we removed the thesis submission fee, which helped, uh, made things a little bit easier, but it was less satisfying than being able to give a student a bound copy at the end of the process. Um, we provided resources to them to go through a third party vendor, but ultimately, you know, it only goes so far. Uh, but we had uh, difficulty also with file naming conventions. In the lead up to our outreach, we created extensive guidelines on how to name files and shared these with the faculty thesis advisors that were participating. Uh, but sadly, many did not adhere to it. Uh, so it took some time to correct files on our part and do validation. Last, we knew ahead of time uh, that these works were going to have some kind of public access down the road. So we needed to request permission from the students in order to make their thesis available in an online thesis repository. So to be clear, this didn't exist yet, but we were thinking ahead. Um, and so we were asking permission. We created a separate form for the students uh, and it took a lot of time actually to outreach it to all the graduating students and checking in with them over email to make sure that they all uh, submitted it. So uh, with the spring 2020 submission behind us, uh, with lots of issues, of course, we were able to dedicate much more time to researching ETD platforms and preparing to make a move. And one of the first things we did was uh, an environmental scan. We reached out to fellow libraries in the consortia and art and design libraries in particular to see how our peers were handling electronic thesis submissions. From Connect New York, uh, the Rochester Institute of Technology was particularly informative for us because they made all of their thesis submission workflow information publicly available. They used ETD admin and we have at that by that point looked a lot into ETD admin uh, and we found that RIT's workflow was very intuitive. Uh, I personally exchanged emails with a number of their staff asking a few questions, but overall uh, we found that ETD admin worked really well for them and their documentation uh, made it seem more, more realistic for us. Um, we also looked at some peer institutions in the art and design space, uh, in particular uh, RISD and MICA. Uh, both of them had different uh, solutions. RISD had a digital commons one, um, and Micah had like a self-grown solution. And while we consider these uh, methodologies, we ultimately went with uh, ETD admin. And I'll uh, switch over to Austin to talk a little bit about that uh, procedure. Great, thanks, Nick. So yes, we, we received uh, the uh, request from Pratt to have 
uh, a demo of ETD Administrator, which we did. And it was one of those demos where, uh, you know, sometimes we get a lot of questions, sometimes we get no questions. Boy, the, the Pratt team get, peppered us with questions. You really were prepared coming into this to, and, and did your homework. So you talked a lot about workflow and asked about how this works and, and how much the library can be involved versus the, the graduate stakeholders. And essentially, I think what we got to at the end was you agreed that you were gonna take a look at it and, and go to the broader community for feedback among the Pratt community. And we were happy to do that. I think we then had a follow-up call to answer additional questions after the fact, but it wasn't too long after that before we received the good news that Pratt was ready to go forward with ETD Administrator. So back to you, Nick. Thanks. Yeah, it was a really uh, smooth process. Uh, from that point on, we formed a library implementation, implementation team uh, with myself, Russ Abel, the library director, Amy Ballmer, the chair of faculty, uh, Johanna Bauman, the head of collection management, and Matt Garklops, our e-resources librarian. Um, and because of the experience with our G Drive, our general philosophy was to change as little as possible about the digital thesis submission process. We wanted to keep the overall brushstrokes the same uh, because it would help mitigate confusion and it would also limit the necessity for making big decisions that could impact department's existing workflows, uh, which we learned from G Drive uh, could cause some real strife. Uh, so after lots of meetings with the PQDT team uh, and doing some testing internally, we had like a sandbox of ETD admin, uh, we decided to launch the system with a few months to spare before our next thesis submission period. And immediately uh, we found out that ETD admin solved a ton of our problems. Uh, the tools to communicate with students directly about their thesis and allow uh, revisions made the process of getting a student's thesis where it needed to go so much easier. And while we would occasionally receive a panicky email from a student not being able to resubmit a revision or concern about when they would hear back from us, the bottom line is that with ETD admin, there was no uh, financial risk to the student in terms of printing out uh, costly theses. And when, if the students made a mistake, it was usually very easy uh, to fix. They didn't have to actually hike their way out to the library only to find out that they were turned down. Um, so the asynchronous communication really uh, made it so much better for us. Um, and being able to assign individual librarians specific theses also made it very easy for us to distribute the work equitably. Uh, so as I said before, we had librarians help out in uh, the IRL days, managing print submissions, and we did the same thing uh, with ETD admin, uh, but it was a lot smoother because we didn't have to worry about random times of peak submission uh, that we couldn't anticipate. By doing it all asynchronously, we're, we were able to equitably split up the work. Um, in addition, uh, the checklist features uh, with ETD admin in order to prevent error on our end were incredibly helpful. Um, they enabled us to verify specific information before moving a thesis forward to the approval phase. Uh, and overall, it just has reduced our propensity for error tremendously. Um, and because there was no restriction to supplemental file size, uh, this really helped out our departments like digital arts submit some of those ginormous 4K video files. Um, another major improvement for us was better metadata. As I said before, in the print days, our touch with a uh, cataloging theses was fairly light, but because with ETD admin, we're giving the students an option to select their own keywords, uh, to provide an abstract uh, and additional information. This has enabled us to actually get richer records from ProQuest that we can then ingest into our local catalog. Uh, so that has been like a huge boon for us. And the ability to have on-demand print copies for students has also been uh, very appreciated. Now, one area that we would like to go uh, in the future is exploring a single sign-on. So Pratt uses Microsoft ADFS, and one of the, um, I, I don't want to say a bummer, but one, one aspect of the user experience is that they have to create an account on uh, ETD admin. And it would be great if in the future we can get this configured with our SSO system so that students can just log in with their existing Pratt One keys and then just submit that way without having to create a separate account. 
Um, so uh, after we got our initial experience with the platform, we started to put together resources, both for our internal staff, as well as faculty and students at the Institute. So I did things like uh, building video tutorials, walking people through the ETD admin process from beginning to end. We created a, a whole new suite of thesis submission guides. And again, we looked to RIT as like a leader in this space for us to get inspiration. Uh, and then we did a lot of campus-wide outreach, the stuff that you normally do when there's a big change, uh, lots of mass emailing, lots of direct emailing to course faculty that we know uh, are teaching thesis uh, sessions that year or that semester. Uh, and then we did a lot of staff training uh, on ETD admin, a lot of checking in with staff to make sure that people felt comfortable. So uh, the real reason, potentially, you're all here, what did we learn from this whole uh, process? We learned a whole bunch of things, um, but lesson one was pretty much that managing approval mechanisms is really hard. ETD admin has some options for setting up uh, these committees, uh, but they tend to be uh, pretty universal. And at Pratt, all of our departments have their own different configuration on how a thesis is approved. And so we found out uh, through communication with ProQuest that in order to take advantage of those features, we would need to build multiple sites. Uh, and we had some concerns that that might be tough on users. Uh, directing people to the right site could be confusing. So we opted um, to rely a little bit more on our traditional uh, signatures using uh, Adobe Acrobat for digital signing. Uh, we very much thought of it as just extending the existing department approval me mechanisms into ETD admin. Um, and the checklist verification has helped us uh, sort of manage that process, but it is still tough and sometimes we do have issues getting theses with the proper signature pages in um, the same way that we would in the print world. Uh, so we're still working on a better solution, uh, but this is where we're at when it comes to approval mechanisms. Another thing uh, that has come up for us that we cared a lot about uh, was protecting signatory privacy. So we knew that uh, if we threw up the theses directly um, into PQDT that other academics could see uh, the signatory's full signature. So we got inspired by RIT and decided to take in the signature pages as a supplemental file, uh, as opposed to putting them out there on uh, the broad internet. And this has been a challenge for us to manage just as before with uh, Google Drive, there's been some confusion, but overall it was something that we were very passionate about um, and it is working for us. Um, and despite going to digital, it still has some restrictions. Uh, so one of the, the main challenges that we've had is we, we have, we're an art and design school and many artists and designers think that if it's digital, then we can make our thesis whatever size we want, 300 inches by 500 inches, and it can be uh, including interactive embedded content. And while some of that is possible when you're creating interactive PDFs, uh, when we're publishing to ProQuest dissertations and theses, we're providing the option that someone may choose to print out that thesis. And so we put guidelines in to kind of rein in that creativity a little bit and ensure that whatever uh, people submitted had fonts that were appropriate and could actually print out in a regular thesis size. And I think this was a challenge for some of our art and design faculty uh, to get behind. Um, so this is something that we're going to revisit uh, and think of ways to expand those possibilities without being so rigid, but also accounting for the fact that somebody's going to read this on a screen and somebody's going to have to print it out potentially. Um, we also uh, you know, learned that managing metadata can be really easy when you solicit uh, the metadata from the students themselves. So just by virtue of the way that ETD admin is set up, we get all of this rich uh, metadata, um, but it has been a challenge to explain to students what subject terms are and how to properly select the subject terms. We've had lots of meetings uh, and even a video tutorial on it. Um, and we also didn't anticipate that some 
students or faculty would be worried about having to submit an abstract of their thesis. Um, so we actually had to meet with a couple of departments to talk about how to factor in writing an abstract uh, because this wasn't a part of that department's usual workflow. Um, and also uh, having them select their own uh, keywords was something that we needed to personally put some time in uh, to develop it. So our very last slide, I see we're at 20 minutes. Um, our future plans are to ingest all of our new ProQuest records into our local catalog, and we're in the process of doing that right now. Um, and we also plan on updating uh, our metadata in our pre-2020 theses all the way going back to the founding of the Institute. And so we're actually considering using the ProQuest defaults as kind of a model for us to build off of to make it more consistent. Um, that way, ultimately, we can build uh, an institutional repository and make them uh, that much more accessible. Uh, and so with that, at 21 minutes, 52 seconds, uh, I'm done. So thank you, everybody. And uh, let, let us know if you have any questions that we can answer. Great. I think we're at time. So, yeah. So thanks, Nick. Loud and clear from this end, things went really well. Yeah, we wish all the universities were as easy to work with as Pratt. So you set a fine example. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Austin. I just want to let you all know the poster session start um, in just a moment.